And I think first two months, I think everybody, all of us has gone through that. Mm -hmm. But after two months, we started realizing what next. And mm -hmm. because of events where, you know, our event, our, our business is bringing people together. So which means that at social distancing scenario, you cannot bring people together. And that was a time we realized that we have to get to the next level. You know, we have to adopt to the new normals. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Networking and Beyond, a podcast where we talk about business, BNI, and of course the entrepreneur themselves. Today we have with us Mr. Sanjeev Day, who is into the business of events. Right now he's working on virtual events, but in the last two decades, he's traveled across the globe, met different people, and I'm pretty sure he's conducted some amazing corporate events and fun events. To know about this, Stay tuned for this exciting, wonderful episode. Welcome, Mr. Sanjeev, to Networking and Beyond. And uh, how does it feel to be on a podcast? Hey, um, I should thank you first that you have given me this opportunity to come on this uh, platform and, you know, uh, you know, answer your questions. This is first time, you know, <laughs> although I have appeared a couple of interviews uh, uh -huh. on, on television, but uh -huh. uh, there's something like this I have not experienced. Yep. So you kind of excuse me if I go wrong somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I hope you can uh, feel free and enjoy the interview as it goes I ahead. Will. And I'm pretty sure the listeners who are li listening and the viewers will definitely have a lot of takeaways from this podcast. So, Mr. Sanjeev, I remember the first time I met you. Yeah, I always felt you were this huge uh, force of energy in the room. Uh, there's some, there's this aura of energy that people can experience and it's quite infectious. And the first time I ever met you, I remember you telling me stories about your travel and how you were doing events. And I still remember you talking about some of your clients like Aditya Birla and Omaran uh, in our very first introduction. So a very fond one. And right now I have the privilege to share the LT table with someone like you and I think we've we've grown in terms of our relationship and we've been learning and you know moving from faces so I'm I'm glad to have you on the show sir and welcome to networking and beyond pleasure is mine pleasure <laughs> is mine yeah yes sir so first I want to know why did you choose the events industry uh, I should say that um, it happened uh, by fluke Okay. <laughs> okay. Actually, I was a management graduate and uh, there was this agency uh, called McCann. McCann is a worldwide agency for Coke mm -hmm. and Gillette and a couple of large brands like that. Worldwide means like some 80, countries. And they picked us up as a management trainee. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so they had different, different departments and sections. So they put me into something called direct marketing. So I was like sitting in a place where there were, you know, dump of... Uh, leaflets and sampling products and things like that and I was uh, made to count and you know enter on those uh, 486 and 386 uh, laptops and all that and suddenly I realized that do I belong to this place I have I'm doing MBA and I'm like a management trainee I'm supposed to handle coke brand and all that mm -hmm. and uh, slowly gradually I realized that we are launching product we are going to the five star hotels we are going for a marathon around India gate because channel we got launched and I, I was seeing those glamour and you know we were seeing that fun part of it and yes I started enjoying and as I said it was by a mistake I came in they picked <laughs> me up they put me on there and they asked me would you like to go for media or you would you like to go for another department I said no I want to stick around here because I'm enjoying and I'm still enjoying it's been more than 20 years okay I'm still enjoying Okay, so, so so you said you started off with a company. Yeah. Uh, how did you move on to your firm that is BizConnect? Of course, you have those two years plus decades of experience. But how did you move to your specific company that is BizConnect? Well, um, you know, there's a this bug which bits everybody. Of course, that has bitten you very <laughs> early. Uh, people like us has bit little late. Uh -huh. So we realized that, uh, you know, after becoming a vice president of a multinational company, where you have supposed to do a turnover of some 70, 80 crore, and then you have to, you know, get monies for your dep department, not only for your team, but also for your superiors also. Correct. Because if the superior is tra uh, traveling first class, mm -hmm. okay, and he is putting up in a five-star deluxe hotel. So we had to bear his cost. 
And I realized at some point of time that, hey, who I am working for? Yeah. You know, is it this people who are traveling in a five-star hotel? Sometimes I used to travel khaki class, okay. you know, because to share my bottom line, you know, to save my bottom line, I said, hey, okay, I'll, I'll spend less, so my profit will be more. Correct. But then I was seeing everybody else is uh, <laughs> traveling first class or maybe a business class and traveling in a, and then living in a five-star deluxe hotel. So that was the time when I realized enough is enough because I was responsible for the entire team uh -huh. and my superior, I said enough is enough. This is the time I should start myself and touch wood, uh, uh, we got Sony, you know, and Microsoft to start with uh, two large clients. Uh, as uh, you know, my ex some of my colleagues, we, we came out mm -hmm. and we started off this. Okay. And, uh, you know, we started off from there. So, and after that, it is, you know, <laughs> it, what they say is uh -huh. history. That's fantastic, sir. Yeah. And I really like how you got into this and you've never let it go. Yeah. And uh, to give the listeners a, a bit of an example, can you talk about what kind of events do you conduct? Or let's go a little back and say, what kind of events were you conducting? Um, is there any specific event that you conduct? Well, you know, that is like your USP or anything. Okay. Um, uh, over a period of time, I think the USP which I, I kind of uh, inherited or which I have ex ex excelled myself is basically uh, international projects. Okay. So I was uh, the one who did a lot of uh, uh, India pavilions in a lot of uh, countries, you know, I've been more than 35, 40 countries, mm -hmm. okay. And uh, so we were doing all these uh, exhibition stands or pavilions or B2B meetings or, you know, uh, getting the, the you know, the uh, interested buyers for sellers. Uh, supposedly we were doing for tourism. Okay. So there were 30, 40 uh, stakeholders of tourism from Government of India were going there. So they were looking for doing those networking sessions, they're doing those, uh, you know, buyer seller meets and I was organizing all that. So I was getting those influences. Supposedly we are doing a show in London for uh, Government of Uttarakhand. Okay, so we were doing uh, an event where we were replicating Uttarakhand in a London hotel. So there was an event where, you know, the Uttarakhand dance was taking place. The cuisine was Uttarakhandi. So there were these 200 English people who were the you know, the bloggers who were the investors, who were the large travel, uh, you know, portal uh, company people who were who were there to promote Uttarakhand. They were experiencing total Uttarakhand there. Similarly, we did it for Odisha, we did it for Assam. So that's that's the kind of a USP which I gained today. Uh, you know, the, the strength which I have to do international projects, international events. Uh, there are very few people who can do those kind of international <laughs> projects, you know. That's how it is. Sir, so, so um, quick question. Now, you are a person in India who's functioning off India and you're doing an event internationally. Now, how, how does that become possible? Because I'm, I'm not from the event space. Yeah. Now, how, do, how does that become possible for you to connect to somebody overseas and make something so massive, bring in the culture of, let's say, Uttarakhand or India? Uh, in terms of food, in terms of experience, how does this happen? How do, how do you event managers work this magic up and at least for a scale this big? Well, um, you know, there is a saying that uh, magicians uh, do not share their tricks. You know? <laughs> okay, so basically nothing. It's over a period of time, the amount of money or uh, time which we have spent, mm -hmm. you know. So what we have developed is that we have developed people relationship we have these people who are there in a similar kind of a business and today being a digital world so Correct. it is uh, not very difficult and of course uh, you know uh, bni where you and me are here is uh, now very much helping me to kind of connect with people who are from you know those uh, people where who are looking uh, to support me on those function areas so okay. i'm able to identify i'm able to reach out to them and of course being a part of BNI, I at least know that they are, uh, you know, will do a good job for me. Okay, so that's how we are able to do it. We have done uh, fairly, fairly large events where we had some 6,000, 7,000 NRIs wow. in US. You know, we have done it in Los Angeles, we've done it in San Francisco, we did it in, uh, you know, uh, New Jersey, we did it in London, Singapore, where we had these uh, NRIs because uh, we were doing it for Anand Bajar Patrika. Okay. okay, the ABP News. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they wanted to reach out to the NRIs. Okay, and they had some hundred vendors. Vendors means 
people who were there looking for NRIs. Okay, so the, they were real estate people, jewelry people, even even garments and a lot of stuff. So hundred. So we were getting those six thousand, seven thousand people. So wow. everything starting from venue to you know uh, doing three day festival. So it, it used to be every day uh, we used to start at eleven o'clock or twelve o'clock in the morning. Okay, and used to go till nine o'clock or ten o'clock. So it was a massive thing which we were doing, selling tickets and all that. Entries were buying. Uh, the people were buying tickets, you know, so they were like paying around two hundred fifty dollars for the entire family for three-day season ticket, you know. So those were the things which we were able to do. I think the, that's very interesting because those are the kind of events I think most of us would usually attend and not know the business side of it. Now we know that these events that used to happen, especially before March. Uh, were something most of us w were looking for, but now considering the COVID-19 uh, situation has occurred, I think it would have changed a significant part of your business, the way you approach an event, the way you're conducting an event and everything that goes behind it. Uh, sir, I'm pretty sure COVID-19 wasn't the smoothest road for anybody. Right. And how was it for somebody like you, uh, who I think faced the wrath of the entire situation face first? Well, uh Initially, as everybody was kind of understanding that how long it will mm -hmm. be, uh, you know, continuing uh, the situation. I think first two months, I think everybody, all of us has gone through that. Mm -hmm. But after two months, we started realizing what next. And mm -hmm. because of events where, you know, our event, our, our business is bringing people together. So which means that at social distancing scenario, you cannot bring people together. And that was a time we realized that we have to get to the next level. You know, we have to adopt to the new normals. So new normals were basically, uh, six months ago, we started getting into the virtual events. Mm -hmm. And virtual event is the is the future today. Mm -hmm. You know, it what we see that in next one, one and a half year, it is going to remain like that, okay? So, so we kind of educated ourselves, we kind of, uh, gained all that what was required to put it up together mm -hmm. so be it an investment in terms of buying different uh, softwares hardwares learning ourselves you know so we have done all that bit and today i proudly say that we are a few of the agencies in the country who can give comprehensive services for virtual event at any level wow. and the um, the kind of a brand we are uh, you know doing now we are doing levi's we are doing uh, Xiaomi, we are doing a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, medical conferences and other uh, uh, associations. So we are one of the very, very few ones. I, I, I take the pride to say that we are offering service to the, our fellow agency people. And would you, would you, would you, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, the people from agencies from Indore, agencies from Surat, agencies from uh, Chennai, they are taking our services. So I'm feeling pride on that. You know. that that's really nice, sir. Uh, sir, uh, there's one specific area where you said that even the virtual events, as you started bringing them out in the market, there were still businesses and vendors that would want that service, right? So for the ones who have not attended a virtual event, can you quickly give us a success story or an example of one virtual event you recently conducted and which went really well for you? Sure, sure. See, uh, first let me tell you what virtual event uh, consists of. You know, there are three basic elements. I will relate it with, uh, as you said, that somebody who does not know virtual event, I will, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, put together what is the real event, which is physical event, and what is a virtual event. So, uh, in physical events, what three elements which are basic necessity is one is that you need a place which could be a convention center or could be a, you know, a banquet hall of a five-star property. Okay, and uh, you know, you need again in inside when you go there, you need a stage, you know, and you need your audio and mic and videos and all things like that. And of course, you need speakers, you need entertainers, you need people like you who can do a motivation <laughs> speaking and all things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are the things, the three elements which bring an event together. So those are the things which we are doing now. So now, the convention center or an exhibition hall or a, or a you know a banquet hall of a five star hotel is nothing but it's your device. Correct. Okay, so you're creating that immersive experience. So there's a walkthroughs. There is a building, you walk through the building, you go through the lobby area, you enter to auditorium, you enter to the exhibition area, you chat, you video chat, you do all that bit. Okay, so that's a convention center. Okay, then what we do is that we create a virtual stage. Now, there's nothing. 
It is basically a green chroma screen. We stand in front of that and we can create anything what you want. You want to create a school, you want to create a White House, you want to create a <laughs> parliament, you create anything. Yes. Uh, uh, as you asked, there is a, for Levi's, we created a, some Diwali, something they wanted to do, and we created a, 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 you know, a, a kind of a background for that. They said, you know what, our people are at home. They haven't gone to office six, mo six months from now. So six from uh, last six months. So can you create our office? We created their office. So there was a front office. We, we did a 3D walkthrough in the office. Mm -hmm. because, they, because the people who were joining, there were some thousand people who were joining, and they wanted to see their office. So we created that office. Wow. Okay, so that is the atmosphere we create. And of course, Green Chroma created the stage and speakers. So we have tools from where we, we bring them to the backstage and then we put in the front stage. Okay. So people, audiences, thousand people join there. Backstage is 10 people, 12 people. Like we are here and we come here and we take question answers, polling correct, and things correct, like that. Correct. So that's what consists of a uh, virtual event is. Fair enough, sir. So now, we're quickly moving on to that example you gave me, Levi's, right? So Levi's is a company that you've worked with yeah. uh, for this. Yeah. So what happened? What were they looking for uh, in that event? I mean, if that's okay, if you can share. Sure, sure, sure. It, this is also came from one of our BNI, uh, you know, member. She's a good friend of my Mansa. Um, you know, they were looking for uh, creating an immersive experience where they can give away uh, for their, uh, you know, employees who want to join in there. They wanted to do a photo booth area. They can want to take a foot good, nice, nice pictures, photographs. They wanted to see the office, as I said. And then, of course, there were puja was conducted. We did a live streaming of the puja on that platform. They were walking through entire Diwali experience, walking through that and they to, through their office to their auditorium. And of course, their people like the you know MD who was in Gurgaon, he he came from there. I'm mean, virtually he was there. And then we had uh, you know Bollywood uh, singer. Uh, uh, Ankur uh, Tewari, he was performing there. Then we had Rahul Subramanian as a uh, you know, stand-up comedian, he was performing. So this was one and a half hour uh, you know, event, which was back to a very, very compact and people uh, were sharing because there were a lot of videos and all that competition which they did. Mm -hmm. All was shared. So it was back to back. <laughs> it was like a normal event which we do. That was the, what they were able to able to experience, and they're so happy. Uh, yeah, they told Mansa that they want to do a larger event in December, so we are looking forward for that. That's awesome. Yeah. I think uh, we have a great example there, and uh, I think as virtual events uh, grows into this entire um, atmosphere, and even if COVID nineteen reduces, I think virtual events are here to stay. Yes, because I feel that it's a much more faster way to connect to the world outside because today if you want to go to Glasgow for an event uh, and you want to meet somebody, a speaker or a fellow friend there, now you can do it on, on your phone or on a, on a laptop and still have pretty much the same experience. Of course, there is a bit of difference, let's acknowledge that, but you can, the job is still done. So, right? Yeah. So, so fantastic. Uh, we finished the business segment of it. Uh, we'll quickly move on to the BNI segment of it. So Sanjeev sir, let's move on to the second segment, which is the BNI segment. We spoke about your business. Now we are talking about one of the channels towards your business. Uh, you've also joined BNI recently, a few months before I did. Right. Uh, so from that, I want to know in the last one, one and a half years that you've been in BNI, how has your, how has your journey been? Exciting. Uh -huh. Only word, exciting. I am, I'm really, really excited. Okay. Trust me, I've got... Uh, Lovely friends, uh -huh. friend like you, youngster, <laughs> I, you know, I, the way I treat you guys because uh -huh. uh, I always call it as a team. Mm -hmm. I never called it as a family mm -hmm. or a business group or a networking group. I always call it and I feel like it is a team, mm -hmm. you know, because we come from a different, different background. Correct. We do different, different stuff. Correct. Okay, That's what how the team also does, you know. So I see that is happening in BNI and I love being here. Because, uh, you know, you experience, you know, different people's work, you get to know what that's what we do one to one. And you get to know that what is the other people person is doing. And you understand that part of the business and you try and pass referrals. Mm -hmm. So I think um, it's exciting, you know, because mm -hmm. and not limited to our uh, Vega, those 50 uh, members. We have gone beyond that. Beyond, yes. You know, today, if you see those mm -hmm. national conferences or you're going global, you know, conferences where you are meeting up with people from different regions altogether. I have connected with, for my works, 
uh, somewhere uh, people from Poland, from Thailand, from Indonesia, you know, and I have worked with them. So exciting. That's the only one. <laughs> That's fantastic. And, and I can also say it's been so exciting for me yeah. as a BNI member and an entrepreneur to come on this journey. And I feel on a personal level, you get to learn so much, True. right? And, and this comes whether you like it or not. Uh, the learning part of it is just beautiful and I for one have been really excited about that part because every single day I, I, I come across a new success story, I meet a new member and I hear a new business story which will motivate me to go further in this BNI journey. Absolutely, correct. Love <laughs> it. You said it. Yeah. yeah. And, and the reason we come to this BNI is to generate referrals, build connections and also give referrals. True. Right? Absolutely. What do you think would be the ideal way of referral generation. Uh, I know we are not the best people on the panel to really discuss this, correct. but but we might have a fair bit of idea ourselves. So I want to know, uh, has there been any referral generation strategy or idea that's worked for you? I think BNI has spelt it out very clearly. You follow what they say. Trust me, they have proven uh, strategies. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these one-to-ones, Okay, knowing people, each, knowing people, mm -hmm. understanding their business. Trust me, uh, those are the things which which uh, helps you to to generate referral. Till the time you don't know about the person, don't know about his business, don't know what he does, you cannot connect. You cannot. Your brain will not start working. That hey, oh, you do this. Okay, can you do that? Oh yes, you can do that also. Of course, I have somebody who needs that. So trust me, it's a people group. You have to connect with them. You have to be in touch with them. You have to be speaking, connecting, talking one to ones with them. Mm -hmm. That's I think the the the, the major uh, you know uh, strategy uh, you can call it. One should follow it. I think you just kept it simple and I, very simple. <laughs> I know <laughs> because that's a basic fundamental, right? When you meet people. You create an impression True. and for the impression to last you got to do it more number of times as that will start building consistency it will start building an image of trust and all of these things which will then take this relationship forward and then your referral generation will come out smoother i mean it, it's worked for me personally because initially when i came in for the first six seven months uh, nothing was happening but as I started speaking to people and understanding, you know, what their business sure. is and I made them understand what my business is, it, it's gone a far way, I can say, since the last few months at least. So uh, very well said on that, sir. Um, any specific three learnings that you've had uh, in BNI uh, as a member and as an LT, you can say? Well, any, you can give me three learnings. Well, as an LT, I think we both are here just for a month. Yes. I think we have to go another two, three months <laughs> to, to kind of, we are still settling down. Correct. Yeah. So learning is that, yeah, we have to learn a lot, mm -hmm. you know, because True. we have responsibilities. I think um, a lot is there in our shoulders. Correct. We have to perform and outperform ourselves, <laughs> you know. So I think that's the one learning. It's uh -huh. that you have to learn. Uh -huh. I think you know, we, we stick to that only right now because in the next two or three months, there will be a lot of learning. Uh -huh. And that definitely we will, next time when we'll meet up, we'll share. Overall learning is that, um, you know, it's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful, uh, you know, um, where you connect. You, you, it's not limited to only to your chapter. Definitely your chapter you're meeting every time now and then. But as I said that, you know, I'm also working cross chapters and all that. Uh, that's very beautiful here, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have traveled a lot. So I have also attended a couple of BNI as observers. So mm -hmm. I was a uh, lot of places like Delhi, like mm -hmm. Hyderabad, like Bombay, like Chennai, uh, also abroad also. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a beautiful experience. Trust me. And I am very, very excited uh, to being here. <laughs> and trust me, um, you know, it's a lovely place to be here and uh, connect with people. And, uh, you know, no other, uh, I think, association or a group can give you that uh, kind of privilege and, you know, platform where uh, you know we reach out to a person anywhere in the world and the person said tell me how can i help you correct that's very beautiful you know? correct that's very beautiful yeah, <laughs> yeah that's beautiful and, and 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 it gives a sense of warmth yeah. and it's like you know there's somebody who already knows you even though you haven't had a conversation absolutely and builds that you know uh, bonding instantly absolutely. uh so any story of your biggest give or gain in bni well uh, uh i not a particular story uh Yes, but there's a story. <laughs> I was looking for somebody in 
Thailand and one of the remote, it's not in the capital city, but it was uh, in, uh, you know, one of the remote area and uh, there was some, you know, something to be constructed in terms of a display unit, okay. I found somebody because I went through the BNI Connect and I found uh, a lady who was doing this and uh, trust me, she was excellent in doing that, you know, she was, she drawn in, in a, you know, um, and in centimeters and millimeters, she has shown that how this product can be made. The only problem I was facing is that to how to communicate because she was not able to speak in English. I further went uh, in that area, uh, it was in Phuket I think, okay. So I further went and found that out of whatever five, six uh, chapters, there's one chapter president uh, was a person with turban, okay, and beard. So I saw that, uh, you know, there's a, some Indian connectors there. So I tried to reach out to them, he immediately connected with me. And I told him of my problem, he said, uh, you know, I am a third generation, okay, great, great grandfather who had come there and was doing business at, uh, I'm third generation, I can speak both uh, English and Thai fluently. And uh, you will not believe it, he got that lady, me on a call, on a WhatsApp call, and one hour he spent, and to, to kind of explain her that what I was asking, and, exp and, and kind of tell me what she was telling me. And it, I mean, he didn't have any business interest of that. He did that. So you don't get this anywhere <laughs> else. So that, that's something which I will say yeah. that um, it's a, something very beautiful which, which, which happened or which is happening in me and I. And maybe it's a gain or gay, whatever you call me. <laughs> but this is what I have experienced, an amazing experience. There are two, three more, but I'll limit to one. <laughs> <laughs> that's really nice. And I, I think that kind of a story uh, is is where it brings people together, right? True, true. And, and next time when you know that no matter where you are, what goes wrong, you always have some familiarity there. Absolutely. And I think that's the message out of that. Sure. Um, one last question on the BNI segment. Uh, any, a story of somebody who's, who's been able to add some great value in your, uh, not only BNI journey, but also uh, throughout this business uh, thing that you have, you can give me both BNI and business if you want to. So you're saying somebody who has influenced me? Yes. Of course, uh, only one person in B BNI, uh -huh. Mr. Ivan Master Meissner, uh -huh. because uh, you know the way he is doing it and the way he has uh, implemented all these uh, you know structured way to to kind of uh, you know having so many chapters, people, and everybody is so. Uh, you know, inspired and everybody is so energetic, you know, whoever it is. So they, uh, so I, 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 I look forward for this gentleman and I, I always get this inspiration from him <laughs> that, you know, uh, someone like him who's managing such a large community, you know, across geography around, you know, so that's uh, something I am only, I always like a awestruck. <laughs> Yeah. That's nice and I think Dr. Ivan Meisner has always been that pillar in terms of, I mean he's so humble yeah. but yet he has that kind of power, that exuberating and he's the father of networking, right? True. So, I mean everybody is in awe when they come across him. So thank you so much for answering uh, the BNI segment questions and I'm pretty sure we have so many insights to it. So let's move on quickly. To the third segment, the fun segment, okay. and the segment where the listeners get to know you better as a person. You will not grill me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, so, this segment is, of course, the cliche rapid fire round, sure. and we'll be asking you a few questions, and uh, it's all about answering in about five seconds. Sure, okay? sure, I'll try. <laughs> yeah. So, so, first question What motivates you to get out of bed in the morning? Well, uh, you know, my, my business is something which I every day do new stuff, you mm -hmm. know, so I always have a butterfly in my tummy, <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, when I get up, I know I have to do something new. Last okay. 20 years, I'm doing that. Okay. So that's the inspiration, you know. Fantastic. Yeah. Name another business profession you wouldn't mind getting into. Uh, well, I, I think I am in so much in love, I can't think of anything else, <laughs> but I don't mind uh, be a professional cricketer, you know. Oh, so I that's love, lovely. I love that sport. That's nice. So, so maybe that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. What's your favorite part of your current job? Well, uh, as I said that we do new stuff, okay. So my favorite part is that to, to conceptualize, to put it together and present it to the client. That's nice. Because this is what uh, the client is also looking at. Because in our business, they said, uh, what is different? 
the how differently you can do <laughs> you know so it's not something which you have done it in the past so we are always challenged uh, ourselves you know so that uh, how differently we can do how different thing we can do so my i love that doing you know <laughs> i love doing getting back in research and all that and put together that's Next. nice uh name three business leaders you would want to have a discussion with uh, over dinner oh wow um ratan tata for sure because okay. uh, you know he's one person who has given a uh, brought that pride of you know bringing those international brands and the way he manages things and all that he's created a lot of first a class guy yeah yeah so he's uh, and and uh, you know he's also one person who's yeah, you know giving also you know uh, uh, so ratan tata to start with then second is uh, uh, flamboyant uh, richard branch mm-hmm. of uh, virgin atlantic airlines yes. yeah okay so uh, and the third is uh, um, the 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 new uh, you know uh, person uh, in the business is uh, uh, elon musk, elon musk. Uh, who's uh, you know spacex and uh, of course the car yeah, you know tesla uh, tesla yeah, yeah so correct uh, i and I, i hate to say this but again elon musk and ratan tata have been topping the charts in networking and beyond for dinners with most of the entrepreneurs oh, really? uh, yeah and and it it pretty much says right like if there's so many people from different uh, spectrums of business right. who look up to the, these guys yeah. there's something magical about these True. guys and uh, i wouldn't doubt that on on any given day True. so moving on to the next question uh, if you were given a million dollars what would you do with it I'll retire. I'll start playing golf. I don't want to work. Who wants to work? Well, I think uh, I want to. As I said, my my interest level is to create, to innovate, to to every time think differently. I think we we will explore more in innovation, more on you know technology, and get more people. I have taught also uh, you know event management in couple of uh, business schools. and uh, you know there are there is a huge opportunity for the the sector mm-hmm. and a lot of uh, good kids can come in so i may be uh, you know get into something where we can, we can give away uh, from our experiences and learning and form up something where these people can come up a platform a platform yeah uh, moving on i don't know if you're a reader but what what inspirational book or what book has inspired you if not a book a video that you've watched that has inspired you anyone well i'm not a big reader um, but then yes uh, one or two books i remember so one is like uh, this book i read about um, you know 20 entrepreneurs they were not uh, with a fancy degrees mm-hmm. and they didn't have godfathers mm-hmm. but they did it because they had the will and they had this uh, conviction conviction of doing that okay so that's called uh, connect the dots okay okay so reshmi desai mm-hmm. so i uh, that is some interesting 20 entrepreneurs okay? okay so i i look at myself as an entrepreneur and uh, i see that book is beautiful i i one must read that uh, second is of, of course uh, you know a um, very interesting topic called i am i am the chanakya in you mm-hmm. okay so chanakya in you is another book uh, which which had uh, given me that uh, mm-hmm. you know feeling Mm-hmm. so that's about it i not much so yeah. Yeah. and and that's a that's a book that i i'd love to uh, read um, there's a book by radha krishna pillai uh, about charakya niti yes. and that's a book I, i recently heard it in a podcast and i've been extremely intrigued uh, to read that so i'm definitely going to pick that yeah, up for myself um what's the best advice you've ever got um opportunity uh does not knock more than one time or knocks once only mm-hmm. i think it knocks multiple times mm-hmm. so that's the advice i think in a very early stage mm-hmm. you know i have been told with my mentor and my my immediate boss mm-hmm. that you see you should be always kind of alert you know it is opportunity will keep coming to you okay. so it is not once mm-hmm. so okay so <laughs> you know you just be alert keep doing good thing opportunity will definitely fall into your laps that's lovely yeah um are you a coffee or a tea person filter coffee filter coffee yeah. <laughs> that's nice um uh, indoor or outdoor person outdoor outdoor so even sports outdoor is outdoor i'm cricket cricket, cricket. Yeah. <laughs> uh if you could teach one subject in school what would it be event management event what else <laughs> i know only that <laughs> what else <laughs> yeah uh, uh, favorite movie 
Um, Hindi movie. Yeah. Uh, funny, interesting movie. Amar Akbar Anthony. Amar Akbar Anthony. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, what is the must-have item in your pocket when you leave the house? Uh, tissue paper because I don't carry uh, handkerchief, <laughs> so I I carry uh, uh, tissue paper. Tissue paper all yeah. the time. Yeah. Uh, formals or casuals? Semi formal. Semi. I'm an event <laughs> event guy. You've seen my socks. Okay. So I'm, I'm semi formal. You know. Semi formal. That's nice. Nice socks though. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, what was your worst subject in school? History. <laughs> history. I, history. Can't remember those dates and you know those. So history was. Uh, I've heard mathematics, science, and the no, rest. I was good in mathematics. I was teaching my classmates. You know, oh. my my maths teacher. She used to put me on the whiteboard or a blackboard those days, uh -huh. and used to put. Okay, Sanjeev, you come and you solve it. <laughs> I was good in mathematics. Okay, but That's... history is like, you know, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what would you do on a rainy day? Okay, um, I will sit on a you know a balcony and mm -hmm. uh, uh, have my filter coffee and put some little nice music. Nice music. Uh, what, what with my wife, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What better way? Yeah. Uh, last and final question, sir. What would you do to relax? What is your ideal relaxation time? Like? Movie, movie. I love watching movies. I, I download a lot of movies. I am I'm there in every platform these days. <laughs> you know, it, it is there in my phone, it is there in laptop, everywhere. Uh -huh. That's the time where I download all of them and I watch them. I mm -hmm. love it. That gives mm -hmm. me a lot of relaxation. I, I become very, very light and free. Mm -hmm. So movies. Okay, that's fantastic. And we come to the end of the rapid fire segment. Thank you again, uh, Mr. Sanjeev, for My coming pleasure. and gracing this uh, wonderful platform. I hope the viewers have and the listeners have gotten amazing takeaways from this. Uh, and the, personally, I had a few takeaways. Number one, my biggest takeaway was adapt because for a, for an industry like events, you have to move very quick and fast because there is another event every single day that's happening and because of the COVID-19 you were able to adapt uh, and for the technology that's available you were able to adapt and within two three months get onto the virtual event side of it so first first lesson for me is adapt uh, the second lesson for me is always be creative uh, because especially when you're in the service industry if you keep doing the same thing, people will get bored, right? True, true. So always be new, always try bringing creativity and something fresh to the table. And my final takeaway, my ultimate takeaway would be something from BNI that you say. Uh, for me, my takeaway would be stick to the basics where you said do one-to-ones, uh, you know, go talk to people, build uh, those relationships. I truly believe in that too. And every other senior member that I've uh, spoken to who's been there at least for five years and above has said stick to the basics and you said the same. Thank you so much for this. Thank you, Lalit. Those... And I must say that you're doing an excellent job. You're putting <laughs> together all of us here one by one and, you know, you're doing this. You're doing an excellent job. I, I congratulate and I congratulate all of your team members uh -huh. who are putting in such an effort and putting together such a beautiful podcast. You know? yes. All the best to all of your team. Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure this will go in a, in a, in a height uh -huh. which we are, uh, you know, you are looking forward for. All the best for that also. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Uh, heartfelt and hoping to have another uh, season, hoping to have another episode with all of you guys. And I'm looking forward to seeing all the developments that you're going to come out with the events in the next six months uh, of this uh, wonderful time. It would be a pleasure of mine. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you so much. So viewers, now that you've seen uh, this amazing podcast, please make sure that you comment, like, share and subscribe. Uh, any feedback, we're more than happy. Please do comment in the comment section. Stay tuned for much more fun-filled episodes with learning and great, great stories. See you soon.